I would like to welcome my IT124 students in this uh, another topic you know, which we'll be discussing in our analytics application uh, content. So let me share to you the presentation which will help me uh, discuss or present the topic for today. So this is all about the Philippines Data Privacy Act and implementing regulations. So before we move on, I would like to first share the statistics that will tell us about the status of the uh, Data Privacy uh, uh, Act, okay, or of the data privacy statis digital data privacy statistics, or di digital privacy statistics. So first we have 74% uh, of people say it's very important to them that they be in control of who can get information about them. So that's also true to us. We wanted to... Uh, control our personal data okay we want to keep it no, as much as possible no uh, we want to uh, protect our data privacy next we have google analytics tracking was found on nearly 30 million sites so that's how powerful the google tracking is that's why uh, if you enter uh, to the google sites for sure when you again enter in another uh, features of google like in in the youtube again they will know what uh, kind of videos they will display, what kind of advertisement they will uh, give you, you know, in their videos and even in their uh, sites. So because they have this, what we call uh, 30 million sites, no? uh, where uh, they, they track, which they track for analytics. Another, we have 50% of people believe that the online advertisers who place ads on their websites you visit shouldn't save any information because those sites are actually saving the information that you are uh, browsing okay next we have 90 percent of it professionals report challenges with data privacy and 24 percent lack data privacy policies so they find uh, it uh, very challenging we it professionals you uh, since we will be uh, it professionals to be uh, i think you will also experience this no when you are in the field already and uh, for now we have this what we call data breaches no, which we'll be having later in the uh, succeeding uh, statistics that will be i'll be sharing so based on the data privacy day of 2019 because there is no latest uh, statistics now on this how safe is your data? Okay, so you, you might also be asking that to yourself, you know, especially when you are browsing in the internet. So it is said that 74% of businesses consider cybersecurity a priority. They prioritize cybersecurity because uh, if you are already in the cyberspace, you will not know if the data that you've uh, entered there is safe, okay? Since they can track the things that you are... Uh, uh, filling in in the field no in in their search engines in the, the uh was this in the fields when you want to uh, uh, make an account in their sites next we have 42 percent of businesses experienced a cyber security breach or attack in the last 12 months so there are many uh the uh, there's this cyber security breaches that happened okay so therefore we have to be careful about you no know, about our exposure in the cyberspace or in the internet. So 38% of businesses were aware of GDPR before it came into force. So when we say GDPR, that means a general data privacy regulations, which states that if a website collects or stores data related to an EU citizen, you must comply with the following. First, tell the user who you are, why you collect the data, and how long it will be uh, stored. Get the clear consent before collecting any data. Let users access or delete their data. And let users know if the data breaches occur. Next, we have 27% of businesses have a formal policy covering cybersecurity risk. So that's a very minimal uh, percent or number. So there was a total of 4,056 data security incident reports in quarter two of 2018 and 19. So that's very uh, huge. Ang dami ng nangyayaring mga uh, crimes, okay, something like that, no, uh, pertaining to data security. So the ICO can now find up to uh, 17 million pounds 
or 2% of global turnover for companies who breached the general data protection regulation. Uh, major companies, I hope you're also familiar with Uber, parang it's a travel app. Google, we are so familiar with it. And Bupa, I, I, I don't know if I have uh, pronounced it correctly, something like healthcare company, have been recently fined for data breaches. Okay, so sila nga, ano, <laughs> nag-breach ng data. So, di natin alam, no? Okay lang kapag na, nahuli sila, no? doing such, baka we don't know their intention and uh, will be abused if we don't know our uh, rights over our data privacy. Okay, so let's move on. So what it is, what, what, what is the Data Privacy Act of 2012 all about? What does it do? Okay, so first is it protects the privacy of individuals while ensuring free flow of information to promote innovation and growth. Okay, so let, let's remember that. Second, it regulates the collection, the recording, organization, storage, updating, or modification, retrieval, consultation, use, consolidation, blocking, erasure, or destruction of personal data. And it ensures that the Philippines complies with international standards set for data protection through National Privacy Commission or the WATCOL NPC. So that's what the Data Privacy Act of 2012 do. Let's move on. So the Data Privacy Act is broadly applicable to individuals and legal entities that process personal information with some exceptions. So what are these exceptions? One exception is the act that provides, in the act, uh, provides that the law does not apply to the processing of personal information in the Philippines that was lawfully collected from residents of foreign jurisdictions. An exception helped for, for Philippines companies that offer cloud services. So it's okay if the, the company uh, collects data as long as it, uh, it adheres to the Data Privacy Act and it was uh, done lawfully. Let's move on. The Philippines law takes the approach that the processing of personal data shall be allowed subject to adherence to the principles of transparency, legitimate purpose, and proportionality. So like for example, that's why we have a lots of IDs, no? And uh, yung mga IDs na yon, like for example, sa akin meron akong SSS ID, meron akong pag-ibig ID, yung mid card, uh, company ID. Meron din sa pag-ibig, sa, pag sa, sa field health and so on. And those uh, agencies and companies are collecting data from me. That's why, you know, for, that's, that's uh, for a lawful or for a legal or legitimate purpose. Okay, so SSS, bakit meron akong, bakit kailangan nilang mag-collect ng data? Okay, for my, that's my social security uh, system concern. Okay, so I, I need that. And they do it with the consent anyway. And that's for a legitimate purpose and proportionality. Kailangan lang talaga nilang i-collect yung mga ganong data para they can perform some uh, sort of, uh, uh, what's this, uh, help or benefit in me later or in the future. Let's move on. So another is that collection, processing, and consent. So the act states that the collection of personal data must be declared specified and legitimate purpose and further provides that consent is required prior to the collection of all personal data. So dapat, like in your case, when you uh, develop a system, no, since you are right now having your thesis uh, writing or capstone project, you, before you collect data to your client, you send them first a letter Okay, because you want to ask permission or you want or you need their consent for you to be able to collect the data needed in your system development. So that's also true. No? That's what actually we are trying to, uh, that, that act is trying to, to say, no? to tell us about data privacy before we uh, obtain the data. We first have to inform them, let them prepare because anyway, our intention is legitimate. No? Okay, so if they'll not allow us, then we'll not, a collect okay of course we cannot process we don't, because we don't have the, the data something like that okay so it requires that when obtaining consent the data subject be informed okay dapat alam nila 
about the extent and purpose of the processing, and it specifically mentions the automated processing of his or her personal data for profiling or processing for direct marketing and data sharing. So, alam nila kung ano mangyayari sa data ni collect mo from them. Okay? So that uh, they'll uh, decide whether to provide you or not no, of their data. Next, consent must be freely given, specific, in, specific, informed, and the definition further requires that consent to collection and processing be evidenced by recorded means. Okay? So, dapat willing sila to provide you the data that you need that you ask of them okay dapat specific kung ano yung klase na data no tapos dapat alam nila okay dapat na inform sila so let's move on so another thing is that the law requires that when sharing data the sharing be covered by an agreement that provides adequate safeguards for the rights of data subjects and that these agreements are subject to review by the national policy. That's why uh, every time you, you open a site that uh, is not familiar to you or maybe any sites that will collect your data, okay, will give you this what we call a uh, agreement. No, let me share to you this video. Example, gusto kong i-access yung isa to you, uh, website. So, after I access the website, may dinidisplay sa akin na parang privacy policy. Okay? So, parang agreement wherein uh, before I can move on or I can access fully the site, okay, I have to first agree to their uh, uh, policy, okay, or this is what we call data privacy agreement, no? Okay, so that's about, okay, that's an example of uh, the what we call data privacy or the, the what we call agreements. No? Next. Okay, so what about sensitive personal and privileged information? So how can you identify or how will you tell, okay, how can you tell that a certain uh, uh, data is a sensitive and, personal and privileged information? So if it is about an individual's race, ethnic origin, marital status, age, color, and religious, and religious, philosophical, or political affiliations, that is a sensitive, personal, and privileged information. If it is also about an individual's health, education, genetic, or sexual life of a person, or to any proceeding or any offense committed or alleged, alleged to have committed, that is also a sensitive and personal and privileged information. So we don't just uh, uh, announce it or uh, spread it or share it to anybody, okay, without the consent. Another is issued by government agencies peculiar or what we call unique to an individual, such as a social security number. So we cannot expose that to others or we cannot just share that to others, okay? We have to keep it private as much as possible. Or if there is a need for us to collect those type of data, we have to really have a consent of that particular data subject. Next, mark as classified by executive officer or act of Congress. So they are sensitive, personal, and privileged information, okay, if it is marked as classified. So our processing of sensitive and personal information is prohibited, except in certain circumstances. So these are the exceptions. So if uh, you can use, no, you can obtain or collect those data if uh, there is this what we call consent of the data subject. Okay, so kung may consent, okay, si, si data subject, then you can gather or collect the data, those type of data. Uh, if it is pursuant to law that does not require consent, okay, for example, kailangan talaga niyang i-collect because for a certain uh, crime detection, something like that, or kailangan talaga siya for national development and so on. So, like for example, sa NSO, no, they are collecting your data or for you to be issued with birth certificate, something like that. So, so there's no need for a consent because it is for the national purpose, for a purposeful or lawful uh, pur purpose. Necessity to protect life and health of a person. So you have to really expose, okay, the the illness or 
i-expose yung kung anong status ng health mo, kung anong mga, mga sakit mo so that you will be uh, something like ma, ma, ma-treat, okay? So, hindi naman ni doctor malalaman paano ka i-treat if you don't tell what you feel or what 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 this the ano yung yung sakit na sabi ng that okay so it's uh, a health concern no, for health uh, purpose to to protect your life and health next necessity for medical treatment so yun lang yung sinabi ko kanina sa kailangan i-expose kung ano yung mga uh, kailangan na data sensitive or privileged because Uh, it's for the medical treatment. So, parang exemption yan siya. Or exception yan siya. Next is necessity to protect the lawful rights of data subject in court proceedings and legal proceedings or regulation. So, kailangan i-collect yung data kapag kailangan kang ikulong something like that or kailangan i-obtain para may masolve yung case and so on. So, they're very technical to me. That's why hindi ko masyado mga word ng mga word na dapat i- I specify no, in this part. So that's it. So those are the things that uh, we are to consider in collection of data or in collecting data. So they are the what we call exceptions. Okay. So next we have surveillance. The Philippine Philippine law states that the country's Human Security Act of 2007, that's a major anti-terrorism law that enables surveillance must comply with the Privacy Act. So that's like pag yung mga hidden cameras kita. So we don't just, the, the, the owner don't just expose it for a certain purpose because we have to consider the Data Privacy Act. Okay? Uh, next. So what about data subjects' rights? Ano yung mga rights natin over our data privacy? So the law enumerates rights that are familiar to privacy professionals. Okay? So ma explain talaga yun ng mga privacy professionals. But uh, what the, th- the things that I'll, I'm saying right now is just based on how I understand the, the, the Data Privacy Acts pertaining to data analytics later. So related to the principles of notice, choice, access, accuracy, and integrity of data. So the Philippine law appears to contain a right to be forgotten in the form of a right to ensure to erasure or blocking. where the data subject may order the removal of this or her personal data from the filing of the data controller. So later on, I'll be uh, specifying one by one the data subject's right. Notably, the law provides a private right of action for damages for in- inaccurate, incomplete, outdated, false, unlawfully obtained, and unauthorized use of personal data. So exercising these rights require or this right requires substantial proof, dapat may proof ka na ganun yung nagkinawa sa'yo, ganun yung, yung may, may data breach na nangyari, na uh, something like that, the burden of producing which is placed on the data subject. This right is expressly limited by the fact that continued publication may be justified by constitutional rights to freedom of speech, expression, and other rights. So these are the, exa- uh, these are the, the data subject's rights. Okay, so we have here, uh, first is uh, right to be informed. Okay, you have the right to be informed. Be transparent in how you collect and process personal information and the purposes that you intend to use it for. Later, if you are uh, doing the analytics application, you must do this. You have to inform your customer of their rights and how to carry them out. Okay, so dapat alam nila kung anong i-collect, anong gagawin, paano i-process yung data, okay? At ano yung turn out ng data. Next, right of access. So, your customer has the right to access their data. You need to enable this either through business process or technical means. Okay, so dapat may access sila. Alam nila kung, an- kung, kung ano yung mga data nila na kinolek, okay? Pwede nilang i-retrieve. Next, we have right to rectification. So, your customer has the right to correct information that they believe is inaccurate. So, kung mali yung mga yung data na kinolek mo or mali yung data na na-record, so, may have, they have this right to rectify. Like, for example, mali yung pangalan natin sa birth certificate or mali yung nilagay niya na gender instead na male, female nilagay niya or mali yung age and so on. Okay, so, 
uh, we have or your customer or we have the right to rectify that or to rectify rectification we have to correct that next we have the right to erasure you must provide your customer with the right to be forgotten provided that your legitimate interest to hold such information does not override theirs okay so pwedeng pwedeng i-request ni customer or ni client na i-erase yung data no, na collect mo so pwedeng kunin niya yun okay so we don't know the intention. So with, let's just respect that the right of our client. Next, we have the right to restriction of processing. So your client has a right to request that you stop processing their data. So kung ayo niya, wag no something like that. We have to respect their right. Okay. So wag iperso kapag ayo ni customer or ni client. Okay. Next, we have right to data portability. You need to enable the machine and human readable export of your customer's personal information. So, hindi siya basta-basta lang ipang-share or i-transfer. Okay? Next, we have right to object. Your customer or client has the right to object to you using their data. So, kapag ayaw nilang gamitin mo yung data nila, then you have to respect. We have to respect that. Okay? Next, we have rights regarding automated decision-making. Your customer has the right not to be subject to a decision based solely on automated processing, including profiling. So, kapag ayaw ni customer, respect. Okay? So, that's about the, the uh, data privacy uh, subjects, uh, data subjects rights. So, whatever rights uh, uh, we have or our client have or our customers have, we have to respect it. Otherwise, uh, because it is... Uh, was this protect it is protected by law or the law provides a private right of action for damages for inaccurate incomplete outdated false unlawfully obtained and or unauthorized use of personal data okay so that's it we are liable if we violate the rights of our client okay if we use their data okay if if we violate any of these rights if we use them in, in data analytics in the future, okay? So that would be all for today's uh, topic. Uh, I, I want you to read more about the implementing rules and guidelines, uh, implementing regulations no, of, of this uh, Data Privacy Act of 2012. Okay, so God bless everyone. Thank you.